Women Who Own It podcast spotlights women business owners who are pioneers in their field, setting trends, blazing trails, and creating game-changing innovations. Brought to you by WeBank, the largest certifier of women-owned businesses in the U.S. and a leading advocate for women business owners and entrepreneurs. And me, Allison Maslin. I've been a business owner for the last 35 years. I'm the Wall Street Journal best-selling author of the book, Scale or Fail. So join our bold community of women who built it, grew it, and own it. I'll see you on the show. Welcome to Women Who Own It podcast, brought to you by WeBank. I am your host, Allison Maslin. I am the CEO and founder of Pinnacle Global Network, where we mentor business owners to grow and scale their businesses around the world. And on this podcast, we feature women business leaders brought to you by women business leaders so that we can make the path just a little bit easier for you as you're taking your own business to the next level. And this is the first episode of our second season of Women Who Own It. And I'm so honored to be a host of this podcast. I've been able to interview and meet the most amazing women who are members of WeBank. And WeBank is such a tremendous organization that supports so many women out there that are working so hard to grow their business and make a difference in the world. And today I'm really excited to introduce someone very special to me. And we're actually going to turn the tables and do something a little bit different in that I've been running this podcast or hosting this podcast in conjunction with WeBank for the past year. And now our guest is actually going to interview me. So I get to share some of my own wisdom over the past 35 years uh, around scaling businesses, because I know that a lot of you that are listening are really ready to take your business to the next level. So let me go ahead and introduce our guest host today. Patty Massey is the owner and CEO of two companies, Micah Material Handling Solutions and Micah Learning and which the second company leverages technology to enhance employee performance through powerful e-learning courses. Patty is also the chair of the foreman and a uh, chair of the forum and on the board of WeBank. With 30 years of experience as an entrepreneur, Patty's commitment to the growth of small businesses, particularly minority and women-owned businesses is evident in the roles she has achieved. And Patty Massey is also a second year member of Pinnacle Global Network, where we work with business owners to grow and scale their companies. And she's also a leader in the community as a visionary working with many of our members across the country. So Patty, welcome to Women Who Own It. Allison, I am absolutely thrilled to be in this role. Um, I believe last year you interviewed me for your show, so it's so cool to turn the tables and I get to interview you today. Yes, you do. So thank you very much. And uh, I know that you have so much business experience and you've scaled two amazing companies and you support so many women in WeBank. So this was is absolutely perfect for us to have this conversation today. Well, great. So let's start with your company called Pinnacle Global Network helps companies to scale. So what is scaling? Can you tell us a little bit more what you mean by that? Yeah, I think that's such a great question, Patty, because I believe that scaling is an overused word a lot of times, and it's not in the, the correct um, in the correct definition, a lot of people think scaling just means growing fast, but it's actually the strategy in which you grow. What scaling really means is to grow the business beyond you. So taking your product or service and duplicating it and then replicating it over and over and over beyond you so that you're able to multiply your growth, multiply the number of people that you impact 
but without multiplying your expense at the same level. You know, a lot of uh, business owners are the ones that are delivering the product and service themselves. And if that's the case, there's no way that they can scale. You can't multiply that uh, over the long term. And so scaling is a strategy that helps you to do that. I love that definition because I too have experienced that having been in business 30 plus years. I only have so many hours in the day and I really don't like working 80 to 100 hours a week. So scaling is important to get your life back and to enjoy your life. So love that. How would people know when it's time to scale? I mean, are there any key indicators that somebody might like say, oh, now now's the time to go beyond what I can deliver or my current team can deliver? Yeah, I think, you know, both you and I have experienced ourselves, and I think a lot of business owners where you get into business and you start creating traction and then all of a sudden you hit this wall and you can't get over it and you keep pushing and you keep pushing and then you just kind of burn out, right, physically and emotionally. So I think a lot of times people think that scaling you should wait until you run out of bandwidth. But what I really feel is that you should actually scale, uh, start planning for scaling before you even start your business, like have that as part of the plan. It may be that you're not gonna be duplicating you right out of the box, but you begin to think that way and you'll actually save so much time and energy and headache and heartache uh, by, you know, thinking that through in the beginning. But if those of you that are listening right now thinking, well, is it a time for me to scale now? I would say some of the factors would be there's no time left. Like your, your day is full from beginning to end. So that means that there really, there's no room to bring on more clients or you're trading time for dollars. And generally, you're going to hit a ceiling of growth. And from my experience, once a company hits about 450 to 500,000 in revenue, and you have, uh, you're the one delivering the product or service, like that, that's it. You know, you, you can't physically do more work. Or if let's just say that you're doing okay, but you have a goal to really grow a much bigger enterprise you know, like what you've created, Patty, uh, then I would definitely put scaling in part of the strategy. Yeah, totally agree with that. And in fact, you know, as chair of the WeBank Forum, I speak with a lot of WBEs on a regular basis. And I tell everyone, our moment is now, this is our time. So if you are considering, should I really blow it up and make this business all that it can be, I would say go for it because there's so many opportunities right now working with various corporations and just in general, supplier diversity is on the rise. Yeah, I agree, Patty. And I'm glad that you brought that up because uh, you know, the tendency is when there are challenging times, whether if we look back in history, the Great Depression, uh, recessions, the dot-com bust, and obviously what we've gone through in COVID, um, the tendency is for businesses to pull back because they're afraid and they're just sort of waiting for things to level out. But those businesses that lean in and say, you know, let's look for these new demands in the marketplace, you know, let's look for these new opportunities. They're actually really thriving and where some of the greatest wealth is made. And it is just being willing to be innovative and to pivot and to go all in. And of course, you know, don't do it alone, get support. Exactly, exactly. And, and I know from my experience that there are different stages in scaling. So can you share with us a little bit about your thoughts around that? Yeah, so in working with 
uh, clients over the years. And, you know, I've built 10 companies over the last 37 years. And I'll say that in the early years, Patty, I didn't understand how to scale a business. I was a control freak. I thought I had to do everything. And even though I had some employees, I was so afraid to let go. I was working night and day and I totally hit a wall and literally fell apart. And I was miserable. I was making money and I was absolutely miserable and fell trapped in my business. And so I ended up walking away from that early business. And I was determined to really figure out how are these big enterprises scaling? And uh, a few of my clients at the time were Ben and Jerry's and Supercuts and Charlotte Roos. I had an advertising agency and I was, I was great at helping them market and grow their business, but I didn't understand the underpinnings, the systems and the processes and being a leader and, and all of those things. And so I took the time, uh, and this is, you know, well over a couple decades ago to really understand this. And I developed my own method called the Scale It Method. And so in this uh, company that I run now that you're a part of, Pinnacle Global Network, for the past 11 years, this is a process that we have literally helped thousands of business owners use to grow and scale. And what we find are there are five pillars of scaling and five phases that a business must go through. So the five pillars are uh, an, an acronym for scale. So you must have these components to scale your business. Strategic vision, vision you need to know where you're going. C is cash flow, uh, which is the oxygen of your business. Critical. A, Critical. A is the alliance of the team. So everybody must be aligned with the vision, right? And have a strong company culture. Um, and then L is leadership, right? Where we're often in our own way, but we are often the culprit. So it's really how we elevate, how we show up. And the E in scale is execution. And this is where we have our benchmarks. This is where uh, we have accountability and we have, you know, all of our systems and processes in place. So those five pillars are going to evolve over these five phases. So your needs of cash flow are going to be different in phase one than they are in phase four or five. So um, this will continue to evolve. And then the five phases, if you can process this all, uh, the first phase is the seeker. And that's where you're just that solopreneur or you're a partner and you're doing everything. Obviously, that's not scalable, but we all start there. Phase two is the pioneer. And that's where you're starting to really get traction in your business. You're probably hit the six figure mark. You've got a few employees and you're really just learning to delegate but you still feel like you've got to approve everything going in and out of your business. And a lot of business owners actually really get stuck here and they don't move beyond that, right? They're afraid to let go. Then we move into phase three, which I call the ringleader. And the ringleader is a bit of a circus because you start building teams. And sometimes teams are like families and they don't always get along. So there's a lot of learning that happens in phase three because you're getting clear on who to hire and how to hire and, and really uh, having everybody get on board with that vision. And often a business will get stuck here for years, Patty, sometimes 10, 20 years, believe it or not, because they're still really micromanaging, even though the business has grown. And I'm sure you've experienced it. I know I have where you've got your hands in everything and you're afraid to let go. So you've got to shift from being a boss, a micromanager, into being a leader where you're empowering your team into action and you create a, a business around collaboration and you really tap into the genius of your team. And that is where you move into phase four, which I call the co-creator. This is where it really starts to grow, starts to multiply, and you're able to start stepping back because you've cultivated these amazing leaders and they're starting to take it 
and treat it like their own and run with it. And then moving into phase five, which I call the visionary. And this is where you have a business like you, Patty, uh, where you truly are a visionary that can run without you. They don't need you. And that's where you've got uh, a company where the valuation goes way up because here you've created this enterprise that's not dependent on the CEO or the founder. And so obviously it's a process. These are phases that you move through, but the key is not getting stuck at a phase. But once you understand where you are and you see what's next, it's so enlightening to see, oh, if I just make these shifts here, and I get some support, support here and there, I may, I'm going to have some, some rapid growth to that next level. Yeah, that is so true. I, I think so many of us have our blinders on and we are like the little hamster in a wheel. We're spinning, spinning, spinning. We're throwing off some cash. Life is good. But when you take a step back and you look at, can I really go on that two week uh, European vacation? next year, of course, in 2022, yeah, um, you, you've got to have those processes in place and that team aligned and everybody executing against a common mission. So yeah, I am I'm so there with you. I, I think I have one business at a level five for sure. And another one that's maybe a 4.5. So we're getting yeah, there. It's a process, Patty. I wouldn't say it's linear. You know, sometimes you go up and back, uh, you know, a little bit. Sometimes we have our hand here and we're afraid to let go. A lot of it is our own mindset. You know, there was a, this is just a perfect example. Many clients come in to Pinnacle and they're in, let's say, phase three. There was a woman uh, named Kristen, and I know she won't mind us using her name because she's been in Pinnacle for quite a long time and she She's just absolutely loves it. And she has a government contracting business and she was, she had not taken a vacation in 10 years, which is not an uncommon story. And she thought making money meant you just had to work harder. And she, I remember her telling me, you know, my team doesn't even like me, <laughs> you know, and once she really started to understand this scale up method and she attended one of our events and she saw all these other businesses applying these strategies and having big growth, but also having a life, she's like, wow, could this actually happen for me? And so then about a year and a half later, so she ended up uh, joining Pinnacle and uh, a year and a half later, I get a text from her. She's in Africa. She's on a safari. There are these giraffes behind her. And she's like, Allison, I've taken 10 vacations this year, like big trips and, you know, London, Russia, Africa. And she said, and the best thing is that my team has got it handled. And, uh, you know, now she has a relationship, you know, actually a life outside of her business. And so I think that's, we become so mired to our business. We get into it because we want to run it and then it's running us. And it actually it's actually, we're choking the growth of the business. Like we want it to go bigger, but we just get so stuck, you know, and uh, that just becomes so many business owners reality. And that's what leadership is all about. So very cool. So, so I guess that um, you have your own personal scaling story and you are so passionate about helping others scale. Can you say a little bit more about that? Yeah. So like I was sharing before, you know, I really kind of burned out in my own life. And at the time though, I thought, you know, there are some things that I am doing right, but I really want to understand how to fill the holes. And once this, once I created this scale up method and began to apply it in my own life, I went on to build nine more companies that I've had a blast with. And it wow. completely, completely changed my life, completely changed my life. And so over the years, and I've had businesses in all different industries from, you know, beauty salons to real estate, to jewelry manufacturing, to um, scuba diving uh, certification, homeopathy, like so many different types of businesses. And people would come to me over the years and just say, Allison, you know, how are you doing that? Like, could you show me? And so that's really how uh, I ended up developing Pinnacle Global Network because 
I just see so many business owners working so hard. And, you know, our economy is dependent on small businesses. I mean, the entrepreneur is the change maker. You as a business owner have the opportunity and the capacity to change the world. And if they're stuck, they're limited on the impact that they can make. They're limited on helping their employees, their employees' families, their own family, and obviously have their own abundance in their own life. So I felt like, gosh, I can't just keep this to myself. I mean, I've done this in, for myself and other businesses. Now it's time for me to really pay it forward. And that was, that has been the basis of what Pinnacle Global Network has been about. And it was just a vision of helping business owners. And then here we are over a decade later and having 17 uh, coaches on our team that have all scaled their own companies and we're able to help so many more people now. So it's really been a dream come true. And for me, the most rewarding thing is, you know, getting like the text from Kristen and, you know, seeing their lives change, seeing them have such a sense of accomplishment to know that, hey, in this lifetime, I'm really doing what I'm meant to be doing. And they're able to see the fruits uh, of this and, and do it on a, in, in a much easier way. Yeah, you mentioned the mentors. And I have to say that was what was so enticing to me when I joined Pinnacle is that they've been there, done that. The, the team that you have amassed are pretty incredible business people in their own right. And they collaborate with each other and with you to provide guidance to all of us. So I, I just think that's that's brilliant. You know, we, we're not doing academic business strategy sessions, we're doing real life with people who've been there. So yeah, and, and just to touch on that really quickly, because it's a perfect example of scaling, you know, when I started coaching, it was just me. And, you know, there was a point where it was like, okay, if I'm really going to help people, I've got to grow this beyond me. And what I knew for myself, because I've always had mentors, Patty, I've always, you know, reached out and asked for help. And I think that business owners often feel like it's a weakness to ask for help, like they should know how to do it. But successful people have gotten there because someone showed them the road, you know, along the way. And so as I began to scale this company, I knew that um, if it was me, I want to work with someone that had that walks their talk, that has been there and done it, that has already scaled a business, you know bought businesses, acquired businesses, sold businesses, built global businesses. And so we really, um, it takes us a long time to find those right people for our team. And that's, um, but now, as I said, 17 of these mentors, and, you know, this is a perfect example of scaling. So for those of you that, for instance, are in a service business, you know, you're an accountant, you're an attorney, and you're delivering that product or service. Um, it's important for you to ultimately grow the business beyond you and train other people within your method so that, you know, you can help so many more people. That is a, a perfect example of scaling. But yeah, I'm pretty proud of my team. And, uh, you know, they, I, I always say they don't need me anymore. They, they tell me that's not the truth, but, you know, they're, they're rock stars in their own right, for sure. Very impressive. Thank so you. you mentioned earlier, um, people getting stuck. You know, what, where do you see most people get stuck in their journey or what stops them from even starting the scaling journey? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it's mindset. You know, it, it's interesting because it's one of the things that we say, oh, I don't need help with mindset. But the mindset is how we make decisions. And we make decisions based on our self-worth, uh, our, um, you know, our past history. You know, let's say you know, maybe their parents had a bad experience in business or there's a fear of failure, you know, all of those things, or just even the, uh, the belief that it could happen. You know, I talk to a lot of women business owners 
I mean, business owners in general, it's not just women. And the ones that say to me, um, you know, I'm, uh, I am growing a, a million dollar, a $10 million, a hundred million dollar, a billion dollar company. And even if they've had no experience, you just know they're going to get there because they're, they're stating it and they're owning it. So we tend to be in our, our own way. The other uh, contributors, Patty, um, a big one is a fear of letting go. Uh-huh. You, this is your baby. You've worked so hard to keep things from slipping through the cracks. And even though you might have employees, you're not fully trusting your team. You're wanting them to CC you on everything. You have to approve everything. You got your hands in everything. And so basically the message you're sending your team is I, you know, I don't think you can do this. So it's not, it's not very empowering for them. And as you scale, you actually need to restructure your business at this higher level. There's a saying, what got you here will not get you there. So that means you have to be willing to be honest with yourself, look at yourself. That's why having a mentor is so valuable because we can't see, you know, when you're in the jar, you can't see the writing on the jar. Mm -hmm. And we do things out of habit, right? We, We do what we're used to doing and we just kind of fall back to that, even though we know it's gonna give us the same result. So it really is um, having that willingness to do things that are uncomfortable, do things that are scary. And then the last thing is, and this is a big thing, and you know, I talk about this a lot, Patty, is having a clear vision of where you want to go. That's huge. Yeah, that whole big picture thing um, that you share in some of your workshops is really eye-opening for me because the team that you've started with may not even be the team that's going to take you to the next level. So you've got to look at it very holistically. And I do think as business owners, we do get a little bit of that tunnel vision because we're just, we just keep rolling. We just keep rolling with what we have without stepping back and saying what could be. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. As I said, we are the ones that are in our own way, but when you have someone that can hold that vision for you, like be a lighthouse for you, uh, because look, let's be honest, growing a business is not easy. It's not for the faint of heart, right? And you have to be willing to hang in there, even in the challenging times. But when you have the support around you, it's so much easier when someone is there rooting for you and, and showing you that path so that as you start to fall back in those old habits, they're able to go, wait a minute, wait a minute, let's not go there, you know, let's do this instead. Yeah, that accountability is key. And, and I'm guessing you use that, or the mentor team uses that significantly when they work with individuals on a biweekly or monthly basis and help them to overcome. So at any other tips? you know, that you might want to offer up on how to overcome getting stuck? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, one thing I want to touch upon, because, you know, what you just said was oftentimes some of the team that you have are not the Mm -hmm. team that's going to take you to the next level. And that's a tough one, Patty, because we care so much about our people, especially as women, right? We we, Especially as women. Who who we are. And so we often will keep people on even though they're not growing and evolving uh, and it's actually holding the business back. And it's not fair for them either. You know, uh, we think that it is, but, you know, it's kind of like being in a relationship and afraid to end the relationship because we don't want to hurt their feelings. Uh, But, you know, there's a point where some people, it's just a fit and not a fit. And so one of the things we really work with our clients on first is to lay out the clear vision. Like, you know, if you're going to get in an Uber and you don't know where you're going, you're really not going to go anywhere. And so if you're frustrated that you're not where you want to be, a lot of times is because you haven't really clarified, you know, where do you want to be in two, three years, how much revenue, profits, 
uh, what are your what do you want your products and services uh, to evolve to? Um, you know, what kind of team do you want? What type of culture? How do you want to design your day? You know, how do you want to spend your time as the CEO? Uh, and really like all these pieces, what do you want your clients saying about you? What do you want the media saying about you? And so once you get that clear vision, then uh, we help our clients reverse engineer that and put, um, we call it a PSP, your personal strategic plan. And so that um, you know exactly what you need to do when. Now, this is, this is gonna evolve and change. This is a flexible plan. It's not like business plans of the past where you'd have a five-year strict plan because as we know from COVID, the world changes like that. Mm -hmm. So you have to you know, have room to move. Um, the other thing that, uh, two pieces to scaling that are really critical. One is to figure out what's your multiplier so that your business can grow beyond you. So is it getting a distribution company? Is it building a team managed company like, like we've done with our mentoring team, um, kind of replacing yourself? Is it, uh, you know, membership programs? Is it uh, locations globally? I mean, there's so many different ways, you know, especially now digitally to scale. So figuring out your multiplier and we work with our clients on that. And then also um, how to build that team managed company. How do you get out of your own way? So between the strategic plan and, you know, the multiplier and building that team managed company you know, this is, it truly is life changing. And, uh, and then it's, it's not done all at once, obviously, because part of the strategy is cash flow. And how do we make sure that the, you know, conversions, sales conversions are going up, so you have a healthy, uh, you have a healthy cash flow, so that then you can um, make those strategic decisions and say, okay, we're going to do this in Q1. We're going to do this in Q2. We're going to hire, you know, these people in Q3 and so forth. And just really holding people accountable and helping them stay focused and, and, um, and so that they make their dreams a reality. That's really what it's all about. Yeah, I know from my experience with WeBank that a lot of the major corporations are looking for us WBEs to be more scalable, uh, have higher levels of capacity and capability. So it sounds like everything you're describing contributes to that, you know, that we will become stronger as an organization and be prepared to handle that growth because we've got the processes in place, we've got the team in place, and we're really focused you know, on what's important and getting that outside perspective and wisdom and guidance and objectivity um, from somebody who, like I said, has the, has the experience. So yeah, everybody wins, Patty. I mean, here's the thing. WeBank is such an amazing organization and, you know, how WeBank supports the WBEs, the corporate members. I mean, what, what a gift to be part of WeBank, truly. And if, um, and they support their members so much. And the thing is, is that if we can really help the WBEs grow to a whole other level, everybody wins because then the corporates are able to do more business with them and so forth. So I think that's ultimately what everybody wants, you know, to see from these awesome business owners. Yeah, totally agree. And, and speaking of WeBank, how has WeBank actually been supportive to your growth? Yeah, so, so funny is uh, there's a woman named Robin Richter who has been a Pinnacle member for 10 years now. And she um, was part of the forum. She's been certified for several years. And she kept saying, Allison, you've got to get certified. You've got to get certified. And, you know, just like every other business owner, right? I was busy. I was like, yeah, Robin, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. And then I ended up attending um, a get together in Orange County, like maybe five years ago with her. 
that was WeBank sponsored. And I, I was so impressed uh, by the caliber of amazing women and, and amazing uh, corporate uh, representatives that came. Um, and I was like, wow, like, what's my problem? Why didn't I listen to Robin, you know, as being that stubborn, stubborn girl. Anyway, I got certified quickly after. And so I've been certified over four years now. And I, I just, I wish I would have started sooner. So for those of you that are listening and not certified, just do it. Um, you know, your network is your net worth. And business is all about relationships. And it's, it's the most enjoyable part of relationships. And uh, WeBank is a community of generosity uh, from the regional directors who I've been uh, honored to build an amazing relationship with, uh, like Pamela Williamson for WeBank, WeBank West and Sandra Eberhard and uh, I've been up into the Northeast and spoken there and April and in Texas, April day, you know, they're just so committed to their members. They really is a, uh, an organization of heart um, led by Pamela Prince Eason, who is such a heart centered giving woman. And so, you know, uh, being able to run this podcast to, you know, now going in our second season has just been just such a joy. So I really am honored to be the host of Women Who Own It. Uh, and so I, you know, I, I am, uh, I'm a lifetime uh, member for WeBank for sure. And, you know, the other thing I'll just say for those of you that are listening and, and you've got to really utilize your WeBank membership. And I'm, I'm sure you know this, Patty, just getting certified isn't enough, like really participate Mm -hmm. get out there and build relationships. Uh, but there's, yeah, absolutely so much support. Yeah, it truly is a go-giver um, society mentality of sisterhood. I mean, we all support one another. We offer advice, counsel. We do business with each other. We partner with each other. We collaborate. Um, and there's so many valuable learning opportunities um, to take advantage of. But what Pinnacle does is a, is a little different. I mean, it definitely is a much higher level of more focused attention on your business. Um, and you've got, you know, a whole team of successful people looking at your business and your opportunity and providing that guidance, which is, you know, immeasurable. So I, I'm yeah. thrilled I found Pinnacle. And actually, you and I met because you were one of the presenters um, at one of our forum events a couple of years ago. And I was yes. so intrigued with what you had to say. I'm like, I want to learn more. So I remember, I remember you came out to my event in San Diego and yeah, I've been, uh, it's been great. We mentor a lot of the WBEs, uh, our members of Pinnacle over the years, you know, it, that's grown more and more. And it's just a great partnership because, um, you know, WeBank serves in partnering them with the corporations and helping them with their pitches and, and so, so much more. And then Pinnacle really is more about the growth and scaling and in the deep strategies in their, you know, their revenue streams and their uh, marketing and their sales and their leadership and their team helping them hire and, you know, all of those things that are uh, critical to a business. So it's, you know, they really go well together. Yeah, it is truly a, a deeper dive. Yeah, you, you really get um, into uh, the complexities, opportunities, I mean, with the masterminds and the roundtables, the opportunity to share wisdom with your peers. So yeah, I've, I've really benefited from that aspect of your offering. Well, we love having you in Pinnacle, Patty. And, and I think too, that also, you know, with our mentoring team is to have uh, our the the members have their own mentor like you know they partner with that mentor and that mentor becomes part of their business in a sense part of their success team but also a great great community that they're masterminding with brainstorming with in so many different ways um so yeah it's it's yeah. exciting it's like having that senior level person that you couldn't afford to really have full time on your team, but you get all that 
cool stuff that's in their brain poured into your life. So yeah, very cool. Exactly. Um, so, you know, I think it's close to time to wrapping here. So I just want to ask uh, if you had one piece of advice to someone who wants to scale, what might it be? And then also how do people find out more about Pinnacle? Yeah, I would say, you know, the, I, I probably have two pieces, two pieces of advice. Uh, I'll sneak one in. Um, you know, the first is just, just to know that it is possible. I know that sometimes it can feel like you're beating your head against the wall um, and you're working so hard and you have lots of people, you know, uh, that are have demands on you and that are counting on you. And, and just to know that you absolutely do not need to do it alone and your dreams are important. They're really important. You're born with these gifts. Mm -hmm. So don't sell yourself short and just continue walking towards the, those dreams every single day and don't let anyone tell you that they can't be done. And you know, as Phil Knight, the, the founder of Nike said, running a business is hard enough, get all the support, get all the help that you can get and um you know don't do it alone you know you don't have to be out on this island alone there are a lot of people that speak your language that get you and uh you know that are there to support you um and then if you are interested in learning more about pinnacle global network you can actually go to our website which is pinnacleglobalnetwork.com and uh, just, you know, uh, contact us through our website and we can get you on with a mentor who can, you know, answer all the questions that you have and just, you know, give you support right then and there on your business. Yeah, and I'd like to add to that because I do speak with a lot of WBEs in my role with WeBank that anybody who ever wants to have a conversation, um, I am completely open. So I'm at pmassey at micagroup.com, M-Y-C-A group.com. Don't hesitate. Happy to share my experiences um, and, you know, just be a resource for you. Yeah, thanks, Patty. You are so wonderful and i'm so you know honored that i met you through we bank and um you know it's uh it can be a long road and isolating to do business on your own and it doesn't have to be that way it can be fun and enjoyable and rewarding and we're all here for you and also that's really what women who own it podcast is all about and we have an incredible season ahead this was our kickoff Patty, so honored to have you help us kick off season two. I hope those of you that listened got some great tips on scaling today uh, and so that you can start applying this to your business. And we're excited for a big season ahead. We've got some amazing interviews planned with some powerful business leaders. You have so much to learn. So please share this po podcast with other colleagues that you know. Um, for sure subscribe and if you enjoyed the uh the podcast today or any of our episodes definitely give us a review and until next time get out there and elevate yourself because you are worth it bye everybody bye now